<laughs> All right, go ahead. Hi, this is Dr. Culhane oh, from Mercy College, you. Faculty of Social, Behavioral, and Natural Sciences, and I'm here with Miss Fairweather from the Metropolitan Soundview School and her wonderful students who've come here for a tour of Mercy, <laughs> and they're in our tiny lab where we're doing groundbreaking work on turning garbage into clean, renewable energy and fertilizer for hydroponic food gardens. The lab was started in response to Hurricane Sandy and the idea that many people, particularly those who are um, uh, of, uh, at, at risk in terms of, of income and opportunity, were disproportionately affected by the power outages that the hurricane caused. So even if you escaped the fury of a disaster like the hurricane, your community, your home could be severely impacted for a long time. Maybe you can't get electricity, maybe you can't even get gasoline to run a backup generator. That happened to a lot of our students and their families. So in response, we created this study lab where we're showing that using very simple recycled materials, this is an international bulk container, recycled, they ship all sorts of goods around, they're on a pallet, you probably see them in many junkyards. These 1,000 liter IBC containers are filled with water. And then in the water about a month and a half ago, we put some horse manure. And the horse manure fermented because we sealed them. And over the period of about three weeks, the bacteria in the horse manure began to consume what energy was left in the horse manure and started making methane gas. Indelicately, we call it fart gas. And yes, it lights. It's flammable. It's methane. It's the same thing as natural gas, which you have in bottles that you, that you purchase or that comes into your home for your stove. It's just produced truly natural. It's true natural gas. But then after a while, the methane starts going down because the bacteria have nothing else to eat. Horse manure doesn't have a lot of energy in it. So we've been feeding them, right? I'll leave, now turn it over to you. Tell them what we've been doing. We've been feeding it every, uh, every day also with sugar. You put sugar in the water. We uh, actually use this. It's a certain amount. How much liters again? Uh, two, two liters of water. Two liters of water and we measure out the sugar and we feed it right into the top here and it just goes back in. So it's like a, it's like your stomach, just doing the same thing over and over again. And then we've begun trials using food waste. You can see some uh, pistachios and some orange peels. And we use the Insincorator food grinder. Many of you probably have them in your homes. This is just a garbage disposal that goes underneath your sink. Oh. And they always say, recycle your food waste is one of their slogans. You can take all your apple cores, anything really. With these, you take all the food waste that you scrape off your plate every night that you would be throwing away, putting in a smelly plastic bag. It goes down your sink. And for us, we've demonstrated that you can take all your food waste and put it in these tanks. And 24 hours later, you can get up to two hours of cooking gas per tank. So these, eventually, when we get them fed, we're doing the science now, should produce four hours of cooking gas or be able to run an electric generator for approximately an hour and a half to two hours. So in disasters, imagine that you always have an energy source that you can always rely on because you'll always have kitchen waste. And this turns it into a nice fertilizer, and that fertilizer can be used to grow plants so you can feed your family nice, nutritious food every day. So it is the ultimate solution, and your name is? Catherine. Catherine, nice to meet you. Catherine is now going to become a first That's flamer. True. That means somebody who lights a biogas flame for the first time. Chris is going to show her how. And this, by the way, this is Chris Joseph, and this is Jennifer Giovanni. These are the research assistants. Uh, you guys are what grades? Uh, I'm a junior. Stop, Catherine. I'm a senior. Junior and a senior, so you might have a chance. Uh, this lab will be running forever. So join us in this, in this research, but go ahead, Chris, and... Uh, She's got the lighter. Yeah, Let's turn off the light. light. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. All right. And this is from, from just from food waste. And there it is, a beautiful, clean, you can turn the lighter off, clean flame, no smell, no smoke, no carbon Ooh. dioxide. Mm -hmm. It is, it's the same methane that people are fracking for now. If you've been reading about fracking and how there's a big controversy about getting natural gas from oil wells underneath New York, we don't have to do that. As long as we have kitchen garbage, we've got gas, we've got methane. So don't believe any of the, uh, any of the lies out there that in order to have natural gas, you gotta frack or put chemicals under the ground. This is kitchen garbage. Your kitchen garbage every day can do this. And it's a 24 hour process. How cool is that? Yeah, it's cool. They didn't tell you that in school, did they? No. Very few people know. In India, there are 
There are 2 million of these in India at households, 20 million in China. I was visiting Nepal, and there are a quarter of a million. The government is paying people to put them in. Uh, this is also going on in, uh, we just brought it to Iraq. Chris was a soldier in Iraq, and we're talking now about bringing it to military bases because you got a lot of food waste, as you were pointing out, you've been out there, and your idea was? To just bring it over to the military insula installations that's across the water and give them an example of how it can be used, you know, to future save the government money. Number one, instead of paying somebody else to go ahead and get disposed of our, our normal trash, we can get rid of ourselves. And that it gives soldiers something else to do instead of always going out. You know, you have not necessarily saying like you have soldiers that might be came that might came back from war and they just they just want to continuously fight, but they can't, right? So this gives them a job. Yeah. So this this is a way for uh, for us to improve uh, the living situation everywhere. And you should know, as a final wrap up, that you can also put your toilet wastes in here. Mm -hmm. Toilet waste, uh, instead of uh, dumping them into rivers easy. where they cause disease, <laughs> cause cholera and typhoid, the best solution for the world is to have your toilets and your kitchens all plumbed to biodigesters that turn it into clean burning methane and nutrient rich fertilizer. Yeah, and run electric generators. And this refrigerator is a biogas powered refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, it got to be biodegradable food, so not metal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like Could you heat you your house with this? What do you yes. Mean, we so how about no, I'm just saying. That's why I said anything. All, that you all eat. organic waste. Like waste in the toilet. The waste yeah. from the yeah. toilet. The waste in the kitchen. All organic material oh, can be turned by these bacteria into methane, natural gas, and uh, fertilizer. Well, thank so thanks a bunch, and I thank hope to you. see you next year. Thank, thank you very much. I'll email you the picture, and the video will be on YouTube if that's okay with you. I'm here.